Okay, so because we have hacks on stream, gotta talk about his use of the box. Really he, impressive stuff, honestly. He is playing on the box. Um, I think, you know, your opinions on the legality of it aside, I think one of the more impressive things is the fact that you have a person that had been playing this game for a decade with muscle memory for a GameCube controller. And, you know, I won't say that he's gotten right back to where he was from before. You know, I, I feel like, uh, you know, he definitely still has like a little bit of a, a, a little bit of work to do as far as like his work on the box. But, I mean, relearning an entire decade's worth of tech skill like that is really impressive. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people when it comes to hacks, they don't really, they don't really talk about his gameplay much anymore, his actual play the game. They get caught up in the controversy, they get caught up in the box, they get caught up in the, the drama surrounding him. But in reality, the reason that we fell in love with this guy was because he's just a really, really good melee player. And not only was he good, he knew how to put on a show. He did. He was definitely one of the most uh, technically uh, accurate foxes on the planet. He just, his execution was incredible, Silent Wolf-esque uh, for sure. And I mean, that uh, they had a fox ditto, it was like years ago that they had. It might have been one of like the best fox dittos like, anybody's ever seen. Yeah, and now it's like both of those guys um, definitely still technical, technically sound hacks, trying to bring that fox up to that level with the box now. And it's just a matter of, it's not really even a matter of can he do it. Can he evolve as a player in a way that allows him to use this new tool that, uh, for the most part, is uncharted territory. I like that uh, up you have a shield that Stango used uh, in order to take off that stock. It's like a, uh, it's like a short you can. You do it out of, uh, out of block, and you're, uh, it's just so quick and so strong, especially when they're right next to you with that hitbox. One shine, though, is going to take away, <laughs> take away that mark stock. One of the unfortunate things, Martha's really such a, oh man, went really Close aggressive with that uh, spike, there. but this might be bad. And again, I was just about to say, the shine spike, Martha's is especially susceptible to shine spike because of how uh, his upbeat does not get a lot of horizontal recovery. So he's really forced to use his double jump and his side B in order to get closer to this stage and then use upbeat to like travel upward. Uh, but with shine, because of the way that it sends you, uh, Martha's gonna have a lot of difficulty making it back sometimes. Stango trying to control the stage here. Jab, Mewtwo King S doesn't quite finish up. I watch, I watch Hacks move in this box, especially when he was doing that up air juggle just a moment ago. And I'm just like trying to imagine doing that in my head, but without a control stick. And I'm just like, how is he following him? Yeah, that? I mean, it's beyond, like, for me right now, like, it's beyond comprehension. But that's because I've never even tried to play with a Smash box. Right, right, exactly. Me either. But it's just like, it's just amazing that like he's doing all these things, and you know, in, in your head, you're just thinking, oh, he's you know, you know, doing this uh, motion on the game. Just like, no, no, he's just pressing buttons. He's just pressing different buttons, very different buttons. Ooh, I like this juggling. Oh man, hacks really bad. Messed up the di on all those hits. I feel like he was trying to go for a survival di. Maybe he thought he was going to get hit by the weak part instead of the tipper, which sends you up. Uh, but he di'd in on all those tipper hitboxes, just up, up, and then spike right down. Hacks in a dangerous position here. This is that perfect percent that Marth likes for combos and juggles. And oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Sango Dang. with the clutchest of F smashes. Hacks was up that entire game. He was he was winning solidly for the entire game and just one well-placed tipper. Victory snatched from the jaws of defeat by Stango for sure. Hacks immediately going to his counter pick here. Yoshi's story. Let's see if he can redeem himself. Oh. Already. Wow, that was that was incredible. Marth went for the really aggressive, like low percent, like get him off the stage. Now I'm gonna try to go for the edge guard. And Hex went for double jump down air. You almost never see that with Fox, but that was the perfect option to use in that situation. Woo! Woo! These double shines though. This could be bad. Like that went a little too hard on the angle. <sighs> hit that hit that uh, angle button a little too hard on those smash boxes. So these foxes that we've seen on stream, uh, we've seen a few of them use the same shield pressure setup that I feel like the first time I saw it was with West Balls did it. But <clears throat> You know, people get crazy about the multi shines, and they're just like, "Yo, I can do eight, ten multi shines on uh, on shield," but you know, they can only do it like ten percent of the time. Well, it's pretty easy to get a double shine like pretty consistently, right? So what they do is they do the double shine wave dash down into another double shine, and that's a more consistent setup to be able to do shield pressure. Miss the ledge and uh, was die. Uh, he you drop down a little bit when you're in Firefox. So even though he started off the Firefox, he dropped down just a little bit and uh, died off the bottom because of it. Hax having a rough go of it here. Several SDs in this set so far. 
That's tough, man. The, the, the box tech skill, it's a uh, it giveth and it taketh. Absolutely. Stango looking to get back in it here. Did win that first game from a very similar position, being down on the cards. Caught the golden snitch at the last moment. Yeah. Can he do it again? One tipper, 150 can points. He, can he do it again? That's actually yeah, a great. Cool. That's, that's cool, actually yeah. a great option select there because a lot of people would just like really be looking for you to forward smash. Mm -hmm. He didn't go with the easy option of forward smashing. Oh, Ooh. nice counter recovery. He knew that he was just sitting there trying to get the back airs on him and just a uh, well, hard call out on that. Shy guy got absolutely bodied and then Stango gets sent. I got multiple shy guys. It was a massacre. It was a shy guy massacre. There was only one survivor and it was not Stango even. <laughs> it was some other random shy guy. It was just just the shy guys were just collateral damage, man. They, they, they were civilians in this war. 1-1, one, one, Hax versus Stango. And the immediate counter pick to FD. We'll see how good Stango's uh, punish game is right now. Right now. <laughs> and he's not music game. Um, yeah, not music game. 50%. He still has a couple of chances to redeem himself before the game is over. It's true. But um, 50% is a little underwhelming, though, when you're uh, Marth first Fox on FD. That's really, like... You have to at least be able to get, because you get the up throws, and then after a while, uh, you build up some percent, and you're able to get the up tilt, re grab, up throw, and up air juggles. Um, and then at that point, that's when it becomes a little bit more difficult. You know, then you'll see Lamar start to drop their uh, drop their punish game at that point, but you didn't even make it to, to that point. The shine pressure from Hax has been awesome. Ooh, the neutral get up and just shine him when uh, when Martha upbeat. That was a really good option. I, I do like that at the very, very low percent when the chain grab doesn't actually work. You do a, a fourth throw or a down throw, and Fox doesn't actually go into knockdown. He'll like he'll bounce, and then he'll be standing up, and Foxes won't be ready for that. You just get another grab, and then you start the chain grab. Ooh, the weak up air. Necessary tool in this matchup to be able to get the proper uh, juggles. Uh, you have to switch between the tipper hitbox and the weak hitbox in order to make sure that the knockback works in your favor for the punish. Ooh. And ooh, simple up throw dunk. The space jam combo. It was, it was the, the meteor jam. <laughs> the meteor jam. And that's it. One of the things that's uh, really uh, tough for Marth recovering is that if he stays off stage for an extended period of time, it's only that first uh, uh, side B. Ooh. Oh, man, that was almost a really good edge guard. But a surprise, very a surprised sneak. Stango didn't die there. Yeah, he, he should have. Haxa, I think, gave up a little bit of stage space because he was so spooked about being that own edge guard that he just wanted to be on stage. <laughs> Hax working with a great follow-up here, a great combo, if you will, but... Not true hits though, just just following up on these hits very expertly, not yeah. allowing Stango to really get reestablished. Yeah, and oh, more shine and, pressure. I'm digging yeah. this. What we've seen from Hacks as this as this set has gone on, he is picking up picking up speed, getting them hands warm on the on the piano. Nice with them keys. It's a. Uh, I bet I bet Hacks can make music with the Smashbox. Oh, Probably, I've, oh no! I'm surprised that's, he isn't already doing that. That's rough, man. 8% suicide. And now it's a 2 1. You know that perhaps. guy that Hungrybox recorded the video of making the music with the game controller? It wouldn't look as impressive on an arcade stick. Though. No, but you got him out in the front rocking the game controller. He's like the lead man. Then you got Hacks in the back on the box. But he's, he's got he's got like three or four boxes lined up. And then we've got the drummer using the DK bongos. Oh, uh, yeah. The f yes. <laughs> yes. But he went. <laughs> Stango goes back to Final Destination. Uh, I think that's an obvious pick. I mean, even though he lost on this day, it's not like you're going to find a better stage for Fox versus uh, for Marth versus Fox. Uh, we'll see if he's able to improve his punish game a little bit. We know it's a very close and doable game. Um, he, pretty much all these games have been close for Stango. He's just had some key mix-ups uh, not going in his favor. And... Uh, Jump from the ledge and oh, nice! He was able to, he's able to refresh the float on his side B. So I was trying to mention before one of the difficult things that Marth has to deal with when he's recovering is that uh, that side B, that first of the side B that helps you like float towards, you really only gain a lot of height with the very first one. You'll start to drop after that, and it's difficult because if you're in a situation where you're getting into an extended edge guard and you have no double jump, the side B is not going to do anything. You're just going to drop down from that. I'm really impressed with the pace that Hax has been able to put on these last two games on FD. This is a stage where most Foxes will slow it down because they don't want to get grabbed and, and punished for a lot of damage, but 
Hax is uh, He's been showing no hesitation to get in your face with that shine. He has been very, very aggressive. You're right, but he understands that if he does it, if he executes it correctly, he's safe. It is a it's a good option because he does not run any risk so long as he executes correctly. And most of the time, he hasn't really gotten punished for it. He, he got grabbed once at the very beginning of the first game, and then after that, he hasn't really been hit with a hard punish since. Oh, that was that was odd. He, oh, uh, this is he this is a yay favorite here. <laughs> the, the down air, the down airing Marth as he tries to recover on the stage. It's uh underutilized. Drug Fox will use it sometimes in certain matchups. I'm not sure if he uses it versus Marth specifically, but definitely an underrated tool. Oh, nice combo was working up there for Stango, but he misses his uh, finisher and ends up taking a stock himself. And I'm not sure how I feel about the forward throw at 140. I'm not sure how I feel about the side B at 140 either, but this is that thing that they say about Marth. You know, he gets to a certain percent, has a little bit of trouble closing the show. It does. There's like that there's that, air, that that sweet spot between like 70 and like maybe like 100 yeah. percent where like Mars has like a lot of really good kill options and yeah. then like you have to build them up to like 180 after that until you get like more guaranteed kill options or you can just randomly get an F smash and then he'll just die and then when he comes back he'll maybe he'll SD other stock maybe he'll go back McLeod. and look at that you're right back in it Marth is fun I'm not gonna I, I don't necessarily feel too, too sorry when I see a Fox or a Falco do that. They wield <laughs> such great power. Yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. And sometimes it burns them, man. It's, uh, it's the Dark Phoenix Force. Just like when you're playing Peach and you get a Stitch Face and then somebody catches it and throws it back at you or you die to your own bomb bomb. Yeah. I mean, or you're Luigi and you misfire and it ends up killing you or, or you misfire into yeah. your teammate. Oh, but I mean, the, the Heart Punish was coming in for a second, built him up to 94, but I wasn't able to kill off the stock. Max. Going back to uh, short off double lasers for a second, but again, came back in, but uh, where he was really good before with uh, being safe on a shield, like uh, with his shine pressure, he's gotten grabbed a couple of times now. I like that down smash. Uh, Mars down smash, uh, the one behind him is not like so good because it takes so long to like come out, but the one in front of him comes out really, really fast. It's, uh, I, I think again, it's another four frame down smash, maybe four or five frames. Uh, and the tipper is actually really, really strong, can kill uh, a lot of characters off the top. Fox, maybe not so. Oh, and there we go. Oh, I love, 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 love that combo. That's a 0% specific setup combo that Mark does. At 0%, you forward throw, and then... Oh! Stango takes us into oh. game five in style. That was nice, a nice follow-up the, there. It was... Uh, there's someone that came over to my house uh, for like a road trip or something like that, some tournament or another. And um, the way he described Melee is that Melee is just a, a glorified slam dunk contest. And it's moments like those that I'm inclined to agree. Yeah, absolutely. That was a slam dunk and a half there for Stango, forcing his way into this game five. Definitely not the same situation as that first game where he kind of got that, that almost not necessarily random, but that out of nowhere, if you will, forward smash. That game, he was way behind and fought to come back. And then those last two stocks, he just had one heck of yeah, a game. That, that combo that he did on the last stock the previous game was a 0% specific setup that Mark has, where you do forward throw and they don't get knocked down by it, so they can't tag. You do a forward throw, re-grab up throw, re-grab down throw, and then if they don't DI, you get a tipper, which is greater. If they do DI, you still get a forward smash, just the, the sour spot. Uh, and right now, Stango is like, after all that momentum that he built up those last two stocks, I feel like he's really found himself in this matchup. He's playing with a little bit more confidence. He's getting harder punishes. And, ooh, really, really close on that tipper. I wonder if the get-up attack kind of more, uh, boxed his body away from the hitbox. The set and this tournament life slipping away from Hack's money. Really good edge guard. Was able to avoid the upbeat hitbox and just drop back down with a shine. Really well placed. Hack's looking for the answers here. Trying to get back in this game. And he's looking for these approaches with like run up shine. And uh, so far it's been safe. He hasn't been punished by it. Oh, uh, really uh, unfortunate that he decided to go for the side B and uh, got punished on hit. Absolutely. Immediately, might add. And we'll see if he's able to get these juggles on the platform. And dunk. That's it. Stango is taking control. Hax is surrendering the wheel. Really, really good dash dancing there. He, not only was he using the dash dancing, he was using that box trot where you do the, the opening dash animation and stop and then do the, uh, another opening dash animation. Really, really good stuff by Stango to be able to uh, wait out the invincibility from Angel Platform. Unfortunately, Fox is so good, able to close out that sock just by a couple of back airs and off the stage he goes.
And nice really, short. Really, yeah, the short was great. Saved his life there, I think. Hack's in a lot of trouble again here. He's in a bad spot, but he might be able to swing it around with a yeah, couple ooh, shines. Really, really aggressive with that uh, dash attack. I don't know if that was such a good idea. Uh, dash attack is one of those tools that uh, it's really good, but it can get punished so hard that uh, I, I feel like a lot of times maybe you don't want to do it because, man, if you do mess up, it's going to be, especially in the King 5 situation like this, just try to go for the guaranteed stuff. Able to get the up throw, use the platform to follow up, and got a clean up sma uh, forward smash from it, but wasn't able to clean up the stock just yet. Uh, if I'm Stango right now, I definitely want to get rid of the stock as quickly as possible. You don't want to give up any more percent. And there he goes, uh, be it a shield again. Stango is in a nice spot here. This would be one of the biggest wins of his melee career, I think. Oh, for sure. Anybody <laughs> getting a win versus hacks is a good win. Even uh, even if it's box hacks. Yes, indeed. But uh, hacks says, not if I have anything to say about it. Yeah, let me ready. just let me just show you this blip blip real quick. He's doing a lot of like he's doing these dash dances and getting pivot. Ooh, scary! Doing these pivot nares that are looking really crisp. Up but throw up air should work and, here. Oh, missed the tech. And this is really really close. Game five, last stock. They're Game both at low five, percent. Let's see stock. who's able to do Imano, it. Imano, Imano, hacks money versus Stango. Hax is already putting uh, the pace Stango's on him. Stango's trying to use these dash dances to get out, and Hax is overshooting his own dashes and able to get the hit, but Stango is up. freezing him. And he's still alive. He's got plenty of percent. Ooh, he's he trying might to be able to get back tipper, here. But this is going oh, to no, be so back. crucial. I that really edge guard like is so crucial. As soon as Hax got back up to the ledge, Stango ran for right from the middle of the stage. He did if, not try to... If uh, Stango loses this set, he will be thinking about that edge guard all whole way back home. Damn. Wow. Oh, Stango has gosh. no choice but to nod his head and give it up to Hacks Money in that J. Crew sweater <laughs> and those fifth mar jeans. Looking this? like a dimey, dimey piece, clutching out that game Cinco. Can we can we put it to rest now now that we've seen the pinnacle of Fox Marth? Fox meets Marth, right? 